we read about your background and we like we were so impressed by your law degree, right? Yeah. And you have experience with uh, mental health, yeah. that correct? Stand-up comedian. Uh, what else do you, you do? Every, a zoologist. What else are you do? <laughs> yeah. My God. Did you have like some comedy fails like in the in the beginning stages? All over the place, still having them. <laughs> <laughs> it still it still exists. Yeah. So like yep, not immune. Because like I've had that that one moment like when I first got on stage, I was like twenty years old, just starting out. My dad was in the crowd. Yeah. And I was so nervous. I had like a drink or two before I went on stage, and then like I forgot all of my material. Mm-hmm. I totally fell flat on my face. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But towards the end of the night, because I was hosting, so I had to go up throughout the night. Yeah, I like made one random joke, like with the audience member. It wasn't like a pre-planned thing. Yeah, I was just riffing, and I got the audience to laugh. And I was like, yes. "Ooh, that felt that felt good. That was Ooh. yummy." And that made me want to continue, even though it was a horrible night. You yes. know, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But what was it for you that was like, ah? This is it. Like, I really love doing this. I'm, I, I need more. I could geek out for this entire time in the studio over the job of hosting. Because mm-hmm. that's, like, what you just talked about was key. I've been writing about it recently. But, like, what was it for me? I do genuinely enjoy hosting. And I genuinely enjoy curating shows. Mm-hmm. And, like, watching comedians and watching their craft develop, watching their bits develop, and then showcasing them for other people. So there are a couple of places where I've just found like uh, that I love <laughs> yeah are you yeah. um still doing your monthly show we we're looking it up you do Ooh, for, my, for people. my people yeah it so really awesome I'm gonna be relaunching soon I'm excited I I've been looking at a few different venues for relaunching for my people but I I, I will give a teaser which is that um I think the first episode when I relaunch is gonna be an all-black episode <laughs> it's gonna be black men versus Cat Mosley and um, <laughs> and just for your audience, so For My People is a game of stereotypes and monoliths. And okay. I pit two marginalized groups against each other. And uh, the winner of that round faces a team of white dudes. And <laughs> 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 climbing that social ladder. That's and great. And we are. <laughs> um, I think that comedians are really great at, at identity stuff mm-hmm. and great at like sort of a stick and move tactic when it comes to difficult topics. So we can be honest about difficulty in our lives and then throw out a punchline, which ends up like uniting and connecting the audience to us rather than exhausting them. Right. So this next episode is not going to have any white dudes. <laughs> it's a black man versus cat. And the subtitle is y'all <laughs> don't listen. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So you use your your platform and you use the stage uh, for good, and, and, like for honesty. I do. And, and you're yeah. sincere with it too, which I really yeah. appreciate. Yeah. But I feel like uh, in this you. climate, this day and age, I feel like we need that. And jokes can bring people together. And you, you take things and you make it a lighthearted, you know, spin to it, which yeah. I think is what you're doing and yes. and achieving that. Yes. Which is fantastic. You. Are there comedians that you kind of look towards and gravitate towards? Uh, some ones that stand out. To you, someone doing it now. I I am really impressed by is Sam J. Okay. Um. So I think I met Sam J. When I was on Really Funny Comedians, the mm-hmm. show that I'm going to be on tonight, like a while back. Um. And then I saw her on Netflix. I think it's called The Stand Ups. Okay. Um. That series. Oh yes, on yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. And she's really funny. She's amazing at getting a white audience to buy in on the premise that they're aliens. Like she's um she's amazing at selling that to them. Like not to ruin the bit and I never I can't tell it. She's like you know, you know yeah. that performance. Right. Is huge. I really think the way you perform a bit is like 80% of it. Yeah. Writing is important. Writing is important, but yeah. Performance can kill good writing. I, I think 100%. Yeah. And like just in terms of like your body language and flexion, I mean every s- small yes. detail. Yes. Like yes. no one really knows how much goes into it, and like I 100 percent agree. Like the 80 percent is just like the performance, performance part. Writing is key, but like, yeah, man, I've seen, uh, I've had bits that generally work, and th- there's a thing you talked about with hosting, like getting into present time with the audience because we need them to trust us, right? And if they sense that we're not here in the room with them, they sense that we're just in our heads and yeah. like running our material. It's a wrap. Get yeah. Further and further. Yeah, exactly. It is a wrap. Yeah. yeah. So getting into present time with them is so important. And for me, that's perform- like being able to sense that your audience is kind of withdrawn from you is so important. You got to go get them. Exactly. Reel <laughs> them, them in. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. Or else we're not doing our job. Doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Most importantly. That's the job. Well, let's talk about uh, tonight. We're really excited about this. Yeah. Punchline Philly. Uh, yeah. I was there last night at Punchline, my favorite room in the city. Like, it's such a great spot. Love that room. Um, oh, my God. 
so much fun. You've been to Punchline, right, Lauren? Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so tonight, really funny comedians who happen to be women. Yeah. I love that title. Yes. And so you've been doing this showcase for how long now? I think I'm going to cheat and ask Rachel. I think for a <laughs> while, like a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple years That's now. That's exciting. Yeah. So tell me about the showcase and what it means to you, and then let's dive into some people who are on the bill tonight. Mm, okay, so I didn't check my cheat sheet, but I That's definitely all good. know. <laughs> you said you were good. I know. I know. I told y'all I'm old. I can't. <laughs> then I talk about being present. Anyway. <laughs> but Sonia Z is definitely on, and I think Emily Epstein-White is hosting, which is awesome. Um, I think that... I came in at a into comedy at a really opportune time for women. Ugh. And I'm going to say things that sound super reductive. They're way more complicated than what I'm capable of saying, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, if people are interested in gender issues in comedy, like definitely come to open mics and check out the dynamics in the room. Um, but some people came ahead of me and made comedy a more inviting and welcoming place. We overuse the word safe, so I'm avoiding that word. Oh <laughs> like a more welcoming place for female comics. What I've experienced, and yes, I might be a little bit biased, <laughs> is uh, our trajectory can be different. I like the, the female comedian's trajectory. Yeah. I think that there are ways that I've been able to tune into my voice Maybe because as a woman, I've had to adapt to my environment, particularly as a black woman. I'm aware at 42 that I've been socialized to be very adaptable. <laughs> I am like mm. tofu. <laughs> I, I will figure out y'all's codes and switch into them <laughs> and connect with you there. Yeah. Um, and so I wonder whether that impacted the way that my comedy grew and the attention that it got. And so we need to create environments for people um, who might have that trajectory, who right. might have something very nuanced um, and unique to say, something different to say. Um, so this show is really, really, really important for me in that way. It's also important to show the diversity even among a single identity group. So this is going to be a lineup of women. Maddie McLennan is going to be on it. I love Maddie. I don't get to see her enough. I was just on Good Hang with her, and she opened the show with a killer set. So that all of us just got up there and that, knocked it out. Oh, I love like, that. Yeah, yeah. I love when somebody <laughs> yeah. sets you up well. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's going to be a good night. Yeah. Yes. Like the host doesn't try to steal the shine from right. everybody who comes after. Like they just, they get the room nice and warm. Right. And then everybody comes and knocks it out. Um, so like the diversity, Chanel Renee, who does like a clean comedy show, showcase on her own is going to be on. Um, Roya Hamadini, I love I think, I, no, sorry, Roya Hamadani. And then the headliner is Jess Salomon, and I'm really excited to see her work. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's the end game? What's what's the goal mm. for you as, as a stand-up comic? Is it, uh, Ooh, I know, yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, it's such a big moment right now for stand-up comedy. I feel yeah. like it's like the biggest it's ever been. I mean, the, the yeah. platform is there. I mean, in terms of like Netflix and stuff like that, all these specials, I feel like stand-up comedy is... Yeah. is bigger now more than ever. What's what's the end game for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like uh it's difficult. I'm a Pisces. I'm I'm a slipper. Me too. Can I curse on you? Yes. I'm a slippery bitch. <laughs> yeah. I'm slippery and I don't even try to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um but I I do I I have like hmm, I have those cheesy Southern Baptist goes like make my mama proud. Yeah, yeah. Pay off my student loans. You know, like <laughs> humble stuff. Because I still like to be able to walk the streets and check out the world. So I don't need to be Kevin Hart, but I wouldn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't um, mind that life. Be pretty sweet. Yeah. I think for me, it's I it, with comedy. I do think it's important to have specific goals, and so a Netflix special would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, some HBO content would be awesome. Um. And I also get that what drives me is I, I think what you saw in my bio, which is I can't get away from this needing to have an impact on the world around me and needing to get to that core message. Right. And I'm finding that it has a lot to do with transcending identity. Mm -hmm. Like this is such an important time for us to connect. So I think my core goal is connection, like getting yeah. folks deeper into connecting with 
one another, even across ideology. Um, so, I mean, there's a project that I'm working on. Oh, it's hard to talk about it, but it has to do with women confronting violence. I won't okay. be specific about how, but in some very radical ways that you wouldn't associate with liberal women. Okay. Um, I've been finding recently that like confronting violence is actually relieving mm -hmm. me. And I'm looking at a lot of lies that we tell ourselves. Like in America, we talk about being fearless. And I threw a tantrum the other night and was like, I don't want no fearless motherfuckers around me. <laughs> I want courageous motherfuckers around me. Like, yes. that's what I want. I want yes. some courage. The human animal has fear. So yeah. what I want is like honesty and fun and courage and connection. Um, and I think that comedy is like, for me, probably the most efficient way <laughs> to blend <laughs> all of those done. together. Yes. Yeah. And have your own unique perspective on the world and yes. your own unique voice. Yes. And like, join me here and we can get silly about, we can laugh about, yes. you know. Yeah. Because you can be so vulnerable on stage and like, mm -hmm. oh, it's so exciting. And Laura, you've always wanted to, to do stand up comedy, right? Yeah. It's definitely been like a thought that, you know, one day I'll mm -hmm. do this. So for someone like me, that has always been like, one day, maybe <laughs> 2020, sure. Yeah. Um, what is your advice for someone like that? Ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, you're already doing it. Um, so. If it's something that you're interested in, study it. And the way that we study comedy might be different. When we think of the word study, we think of a classroom and a degree. Um, but this is a different sort of study. It's actually, to me, it's much closer to religion. Like the way, <laughs> and I don't identify as a religious person, but I, you know, I, got, I, got, I got that Jesus stuff in me. I got it in me. <laughs> I got a whole lot of other stuff in me, but I got that in me. Um, so it's much more like the way I hear religious or spiritual practice. So it's in the world around you all the time. Um, so you're studying people who are doing comedy and then you're studying life for comedy and you're finding questions about life. So one thing I would say is find those questions. Like, why are people doing that? Um, I remember Pete Steele gave me that advice like two or three years ago. Whatever bit you do, just ask why. Um, and that's a great question. Like, why is this important? Why am I bringing it up? Why do we approach this topic that way? Like, why napkins in the lap? Why napkins right. in the cup? Like, the mun taking mundane things and um, finding a twist on them is great. And then just get into the room. Get in there. And then as soon as you can, get on stage. And there's, I've geeked out. There's piles. Like, I had to do a check spot at Punchline recently, and I felt very new. I had never done a check spot before, um, and so I researched. Um, and you, I didn't find videos of people doing check spots, but I looked up what the job entails and, like, what the goals of the job are and how you approach that. Um, so research and just, like, be eyes wide open all over the place. How's that for an answer? That was no, good. That's great. Okay, cool. And I, I do have a follow up question. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, if you can remember, like, what was your first bit then? Your first hmm. thing that you wanted to talk about that you were like, you know, you asked the questions why, and that was the first thing you crafted uh, and brought mm. on. First stage. bit? Do you remember your first bit? Yeah. Ho, ho. <laughs> that's a good question. I took Brad Trackman's class back then. He was teaching at Helium. I think he teaches at Punchline. So, yeah. So I took Brad Trackman's class. And mind you, I'd been doing true storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, yeah, I did that stuff. But my first comedy bit, there were all these little things about being a proper talker. But the, the one that I could say is my first bit, which has developed over the past few years, is my Ouija board bit. And I'm actually thinking of closing with it tonight. I've updated, I've tweaked it in some ways that have been really fun. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but I, I grew up poor. I didn't know I was poor. Everybody was poor. So <laughs> I lived in a place where I was like, oh, you have a daddy, cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I did, though, get into this very elite boarding school in upstate New York. Like, like there was a company called King Fuels. And their kids were my class, <laughs> like yeah. 
Um, so, so well, Jane Fonda, nobody cares who went there, but I love to talk about it. <laughs> I love to talk about it. And I know that people, you know, there are people out there who hear a law degree, they hear boarding school and that's important to them. And I like to say it so they know I'm better than them. So I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did bond. I mean, I did what kids do. I, I we bonded with one another. We were like sisters up there. And I had a bunch of friends who played with Ouija boards. And um, white, right? We know I'm talking about white people. Right? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know why we like that. It's weird, weird people, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I and know. White girls love murder. Yeah. My we fiance do. won't stop watching the murder channel. It's crazy. Yeah. Because she, we're constantly she freaks me out. thinking about, well, could we be murdered in this situation? So yeah. it's always on yeah. our mind. If I ever go missing, you know why. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my... So, in that way, there are many ways in which I am very, very white. The school got to me because I study murder. I study psychopaths. I like for a while was falling asleep to criminal minds, you know, and I feel like it has enriched me as an individual. I was walking past <laughs> a bar with Lauren Rosenberg, who's another very funny comedian um, who's been on really funny comedians who happen to be women. And they were playing nine to five. And Lauren was like, how much do you want to bet that that's a bunch of white women in there <laughs> singing nine to five right now? And I was like, I know that's I white know women you, in there. Yeah. And you know how I know? Because I f-ing love that song. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yes. Yes, I've been gluten-free. I've done all, I've done all the things. <laughs> all the things. Oh, it's so funny. So, the Ouija board. Ouija board. So, I, I did, I, final, I knew my friends had been doing this. I was scared <laughs> of it. I have an aunt who's an apostle who like walks around with holy oil and like when we're in a car we'll like point it at spirits on the road like that's how deep wow. in the spirit some members of my family are so i stayed the hell away from the ouija board most of senior year finally broke down and was like you know i can trust them but i stayed near the door because ghosts are racist so i like <laughs> <laughs> um but what ends up happening is they end up spelling trying to spell out on the ouija board and um, so, but the telling of the story is so much fun. And, um, and even my interpretation of what's happening, like, I believe in demons, y'all. I do. It, and it's fun <laughs> for me to believe in demons. And I, I so, so, so I have a whole lot of fun telling that story. And Brad was actually like, that one's going to be a classic. He was, and for me, it was just a life event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it really stirs things for people, stirs conversation, stirs a lot. I love playing with the tension in that bit and then giving, ooh, I'm about to geek out. <laughs> uh, there's a thing I aspire to, and Chappelle did it in the post-election set when he hosted Saturday Night Live. Yes. Where he like builds tension and then he has these little releases along the way. I think he's talking about his visit to the White House Mm -hmm. and Bradley Cooper is there for some reason. So he's like, there's all these black people and Bradley Cooper. And he has his way of using Bradley Cooper's name to release tension along the way. It's amazing technique. You want the tension. Yeah. but You can't break them (laughs) before you get to the end. Um, And so that's something that I love doing with the Ouija bit. And the why is a. I. I have to confess it. I don't know if I ask myself why uh, in that bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just at least something truthful to you. Yeah. Right? yeah. Maybe the whole bit is why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, where actually did this come from? I don't think that my friends hated me. That's not what was happening. Right. Something else was happening there. And I like to blame it on a demon. That's fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> But like I'll watch a bit uh, for the first time, and I'll watch comics, um, and my fiance would be like, "How come you're not laughing? You're not having a good time?" But I'm dissecting, and like yeah. I'm so immersed in it. Where, yeah. of course, I find it hilarious, but like I'm so I'm such an observer, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm watching like their their tone and their body language and how they're going to connect the dots. And mm-hmm. do you find yourself doing that as well? Mm-hmm. And like as a oh, I hear you, and I feel I relate to that tremendous respect that you have for people really practicing mm-hmm. the craft. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I can sit. I'm watching in every awe movement. And yeah, to laugh. Yeah. yeah, she's like, "Are you having a good time?" I, I, I'm having a great time. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, this Did is you awesome. See I'm, this? I'm yeah. laughing so much yeah. inside, but like, I'm really like, I'm trying to learn something too. I, yeah. I feel like we're always growing and trying to learn as a comic or as a performer. And I just find it so interesting and so I inspiring. Don't want to miss anything? So for me, as a performer, it's fun. I I had the delight of having women in my audience. They happen to be black women, and I even played with them. And I was like, sisters. If y'all don't like anything I do, I will leave all these motherfuckers behind and just do the whole set for you. Yeah. Like, I was at, like, <laughs> but no, the room was having a great time. Um, but people were laughing so much that they were missing lines. So mm -hmm. I, as a comedian, don't like to miss what's yes. happening. But it's a, also a joy as the performer to say, just, you can laugh. I'll have more punchlines. Like, I just buried more punchlines right. in the jokes. Um, so that when they came up for air, there was another right. There's another one right there waiting under. for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do. Last night I was at the open mic at Helium, and it. Uh, these are my colleagues, and these are people that I can see myself sitting like you now, like sitting and laughing with you twenty years from now. Yeah. Like knowing how your craft has grown, knowing how your work has grown. That's exciting. So exciting. To me. And seeing their bits develop over time, seeing them as comedians, seeing people who came up behind me and for mm -hmm. whatever reason look up to me, I deserve it. <laughs> but, I, but also, yeah, y'all, I'm flawed. I'm, I'm so <laughs> flawed. I'm going to go do some flawed probably immediately after. This. Yeah. Um, uh, but I am proud of like the growth I see when people really grind. Yeah. Um, it genuinely gives me joy. And yeah. being being comfortable in uncomfortable situations in different yes. rooms and just getting up there and just doing it. Yes. And yes. just keep working I've at it. Bombed in front of these people and I've killed in front of these yeah. people. Because you're naked up there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So and that's why I love no it so much. It. There's no hiding what's happening there. Yeah. You know you're maturing as a comedian when you do not look for validation after a bomb. You're just like, when you can sit in the room after bombing, like, <laughs> don't run away, sit and stew in it, um, and not seek validation from anyone. Everyone knows it happened, yeah. and in our own way, we're, like, holding you in the bomb. Come back and do better next time. Right. Take it on the chin. Yep. And just come back swinging. Yep. I want that. Like, I yeah. want to be like, I remember when this person was talking crazy at 1.30 in the morning. Right. I remember when it was strong. Oh, 1.30 in the morning. Dribble. Oh, oh, God. It's the worst. <laughs> That's where you earn your $8 as an open mic You runner. are not kidding. <laughs> You're not kidding. 1.30 in the morning. Woof. It is. That is the practice of the. That makes the, you good right there. Oof. Yeah. Real, real quick. You know what it does? Yeah. And I'll put myself up at the very end of a mic that I'm running just to have to squeeze laughs out of an empty room. Yeah. It's humbling. It's humbling being like, okay, I'm not magically funny. I'm, I like <laughs> still have to work because there yeah. might be 130 laughs there in the four people remaining mm -hmm. in the room. And it's my job to get them. Right. So, so I love excited. that. That comedy bar. That's like, if I didn't get the laugh, that's me. If they're racist, that's me. If they, they like, it's still my job. There are some people I'll never get through to, but I can get through to everybody around them so that the laughter overpowers whatever that you know that energy in the audience when they're withholding. Mm -hmm. Weird, you can't oh, you feel quite it. get through. Yeah. yeah, it's thick. Like yeah. it's definitely there, yeah. and it's us to break down that barrier, that yes. wall. Yeah. Yes. However, from inside, if like I'll try to reach you, but if not, I'll surround you. Right. I'll surround right. You right. With yeah. But, I'm, who but get I'm, me. I'm coming for that ass. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> One way or another, I'm gonna get that ass. <laughs> Oh my God, you are so inspiring, so funny. Oh my God, I cannot wait for it tonight. Laura, are you going? I want to go. Yeah. Come, 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 come. It's going to be fun. Take training. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really funny comedians who happen to be women. I love the title. I love the showcase. Tonight yeah. at Punchline Philly. When uh, when does it start? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yeah. Do you know when you go on? I think I'm before the feature. So I think I'm fourth in the lineup. Okay. Right. Yeah. Not 1.30. Yeah. So not 1.30. Yeah. Not 1.30. Yeah. 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 Move it up. <laughs> On his and she's up. coming for that ass. <laughs> Tanya Mosley, so nice to meet you. So nice meeting both of you. Yes. Thank you so much. Punchlinephilly.com. Yeah. Grab your tickets. Don't miss her tonight. Don't miss it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Much love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.